So I'm going to do a, ve- a series of videos uh, with a fellow and on a fellow named um, Charles Hancock. Uh, some of you may know Charles as um, Old Alabama Gardener. He's a viewer. He um, he's made several comments on the channel. Um, <clears throat> He, uh, some of his first comments had to do with his own health. Um, John and I answered a few of his questions. He, um, he took the, uh, the inflammation course and he actually followed through. He went and got some of his, uh, he got an inflammation panel. He then came up to see me and became a patient. And he and I've got, uh, a couple of videos that, uh, we did to give you his story. Um, but before we go there, a little bit more about um, old Alabama Gardner. He used to work in uh, rockets. So it's interesting, uh, somebody in his 80s that knows the technology that uh, Charles knows. Very, very interesting guy. But as you might have guessed from his uh, moniker, old Alabama Gardner, he is really into gardening. And he's, uh, as you can see here, he's got 28,000 followers, folks that have just been focused in learning on uh, what he does in the garden. Um, From rabbits to to squash, to kale, to uh, you name it. And on most of his videos, he he does these time series videos, which are very difficult to do. He will uh, show himself planning the garden, show himself, uh, show, development of the garden, hoeing the garden, uh, laying it off before he does that part, then planting the seeds and and each uh, uh, stage of development of the plant. And again, with some well-funded productions, you often don't see that level of detail from start to finish on what's going on with developing a garden and eating from the original and the true garden to table. Speaking of start to finish, he usually finishes his videos cooking the food and then eating it. And he usually says, "Mm, good, I wish I could share it with you. And so he did want to share some of his experiences with us regarding uh, his health. Um, And so that's what we're going to do in the next few videos. Um, Since he's come to see me, I'll go ahead and and, give away some of the punchlines. Um, as you'll see in these videos, uh, he's, he had some significant inflammation, but most of it was, uh, he, he's had it in the past, and it was being driven by a significant insulin resistance. So he's, he does a lot of work on both food and health, and um, OAG, Charles Hancock, is now focused on that low-carb lifestyle. As you'll see in in a lot of his new videos, instead of uh, some of the old style juicing and uh, some of the other things he was doing, he's now making bread uh, low carb. So here we'll go. Like most of us, we tend to think, okay, well, I'm aware of some of these health issues and they're very important and very interesting. But there's a big difference between learning about that and actually going and doing the testing yourself, getting it done, and finding out what your own numbers are. So, Charles, are you comfortable talking a little bit about what you did, what you found? Uh, Yes, very much so. And just as a thought there, you you really got to do more uh, on your own. Your doctor, your family doctor is great, I'm sure. But there's more, uh, maybe let me say it this way, there's more that you can do. And so I encourage people to do it. Yeah, as we discussed before uh, before the video, the standards of medicine really haven't caught up with the science yet. And it's typical that standards of medicine, even in, you know, in the past, it it took over a hundred years for things, some things like metformin, for diabetes and um, gosh, I think metformin was discovered around 1900, maybe a little bit before. Uh, vitamin C and scurvy were discovered 
hundreds of years before they actually started uh, using vitamin C for scurvy. In fact, many people say, well, that's arcane. I haven't heard of that. If you've heard of British uh, sailors called limeys, then that's exactly why they were called limeys, because they were sailing, they would get scurvy, and then they found out if we just take limes with us and eat limes every now and then, we won't get scurvy. But it <laughs> took hundreds of years for that to become a standard of medicine. Now we're in a position where we understand that having blood sugars over 150, 160, uh, multiple hours of the day causes arterial inflammation and heart attack and stroke risk. But uh, docs tend to basically just use the standard and the standard is a fasting blood glucose and a hemoglobin A1C. So that's what was going on with you, right? Yeah, my my uh, my A1C numbers and uh, my uh, blood sugar uh, always runs uh, 104, 105 for blood sugar, and that wasn't a number that concerned my family doctor. Yeah, um, and part of that reason is because your family doctors focused on people having blood sugars of 300, 200. Uh, full-blown diabetes, not quite so much focused on a um, little bit of high, high blood sugar. Yeah. So what, what did you do uh, and how did you decide, what made you decide to go ahead and get a test and what kind of test did you get and what did you see? I'll be back. Well, what I, uh, what I had was uh, heart issues, artery issues, and I had uh, two stents placed in my arteries, heart arteries, within a period of six months. And that was my wake up call. I had to, I told myself, I had, I've got to find out what's causing this and if possible, put a stop to it. And although I have a good cardiologist and a good uh, family doctor, they, weren't really uh, teaching me why this was happening to me and what I could do about it. And so after I discovered your channel and uh, started looking at some of the tests that you recommend, uh, I did go ahead and start getting that. Um, I took a, something called a CIMT test and mm -hmm. basically that looks at uh, the arteries in your neck, these big arteries here in your neck, to see what kind of calcium buildup, uh, if any, that you have. And the results of that test for me was that yes, I had some calcium buildup, uh, not to the point yet where it was uh, probably critical, but certainly worth knowing and maybe starting to do something about it. The other test that I ran uh, was a, an inflammation body or panel of tests. And it was uh, four tests involved in that. One of them was a urine test. And then the other three were uh, blood tests. I don't remember all the other three. I do remember that uh, high intensity CRP, C-reactive protein was one of the tests. Uh, that would measure the inflammation that was going on in in my body, and so you could you could probably name the other <laughs> other tests that that we ran. So what we found out was that yes, I'm experiencing uh, inflammation in my body, which we now believe was contributing to the uh, soft plaque buildup in my arteries. And that soft plaque buildup, when it ruptures, uh, contributes to the closing of the artery. And if you don't do something about it pretty quick, you'll be into a full-blown heart attack. Oh, and uh, by the way, I'm sure you noticed, uh, there's a lot of pixelation on uh, OAG's side, on Charles's side. He lives way out in the country in Alabama. And... Um, 
challenge is very challenged in terms of getting the uh, uh, the bandwidth that he needs. Yet another uh, digital challenge that he's overcome and uh, still developing huge quality uh, um, farm to table videos. If you've made it this far, as usual, thank you for your interest. <laughs>